Hello, heartstrings, friends and family. So I'm just going to start today by, I guess, sharing that we have, you know, just some exciting um, stuff happening. I, I, I can't get into detail, but I just kind of wanted to start off with that energy. Like mm-hmm. we have, okay, without getting into details, how do I say this? Like there are some opportunities yeah. that have come up and it just makes me excited to think about it because it it could be very beneficial for us and our future and our children and you know just just our future and if you're if you're one of our closest friends and you're interested in knowing what it is that you know we're excited about today just hit us up we'll let you know on the low yeah we'll we'll, we'll tell you the tea on the low you know but you know i just wanted to kind of like I was just very excited. It just, it, this just happened today. We found out about this today, and um, unexpectedly too. Yeah, it was really unexpected, and I just felt like I, I just really jittery and like excited about it. So, yeah, yeah I it, just it was a uh, it was kind of like uh, one of those moments where you're like relieved, like oh yes, yeah, and then the happiness kicked in, and like oh. You know, this it, is this is gonna be great. You know, it just felt like our prayers had been answered. Yeah, yeah. And um, we were in the car, and I just like, I'm just like high fiving Mario, <laughs> and I'm just like, oh my god, Mario, do you know what this means? Like, this means so much. Yeah. Like, this is freaking great. So, yeah. I hope you, you know. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's all I'm gonna say. <laughs> yeah. But yeah. Anyway, but talking about the future, we we've also well, I mean, we're gonna I guess today we're gonna talk about um a few things like love languages. Yeah, five uh, languages. That's something that um Mario had talked about during the time when we were invited to the voice party. Yeah. He um brought that up and it's going back to when you brought that up. Mm-hmm. It's like I remember just staring at you when you were talking about that because, like, I honestly, like, until that moment, I didn't know what an impact that had that book had made for you. Mm-hmm. I didn't know. Yeah. I didn't know it meant so much to you. I didn't know that you took so much from it. Like, I mean, I knew you, like, we're really into it. You finished reading the whole thing, but I didn't know just what an impact it had made on you. How impactful. Yeah. Yeah. I, I didn't. And like looking back at it, like I didn't either. I just knew for whatever reason that this book helped me. I just didn't really put it into perspective. And if it wasn't it wasn't because, you know, he invited us to the boys party. It, it got me thinking, you know, like, you know, like it, it got me to push myself to think like, you know, how my behavior started changing or how my my approach with you was. You how know. you started to try to express things in a certain way. Yeah. And how things were starting to shape up mm-hmm. even more, you know, because we always had a great relationship. You know, we. We had our bumps here and there, you know, but we've always been pretty solid. Yeah. Uh, but there was a point where I felt that we were just shooting up to the sky. We were, you know, things were really looking out and uh, I could feel it, you know, and uh, I never really thought, oh, it's the book, you know, but having. Well, to- I mean, I think we owe part of it to like getting educated about you know how we each wanted to or how we each feel loved yeah um but i think that also takes effort on our part so we can't i mean i'm not i'm not gonna say like it was because like solely because of the book yeah but i think you know also it took effort on our part and we had to be the ones to be um willing to express our love to each other in the way that you know the other wanted to feel loved or you know you yeah. like to feel that yeah. but i, I want to say what the um five love languages are okay. so 
it's not in any order, but uh, acts of service is one, receiving gifts, quality time, words of affirmation, and physical touch. I see you. You say the last one. The best one for no, the that's last literally ah, <laughs> this is literally on the like uh-huh. it goes in like one, two, three, four, five. But yeah, anyway. Um obviously, uh which we you know shared this before. Um physical touch is um your love language. You it is. Uh for me, I think I'm a little bit of everything. Yeah. I think yeah. um I mean, for acts of service, I, I, I mean, like making the bed or throwing out the trash, like those kind of acts make me feel like, you know, you're, you're, you, you love me. Like you're trying to make my life easier. Like you're mm-hmm. helping me out. Yeah. You know, I, you know, receiving gifts, I don't think so much like that would be like a love language for me. I don't, I don't ask for gifts. Yeah. Um, quality time i mean i do i love spending time with you guys i I love doing things as a family like you know we have this thing where we i mean we go to the alameda county fair every year during the summer Mm -hmm. like that's kind of like like our tradition every summer we do that and then we have throughout the year we have little things here and there that we all we have as traditions and to me that's quality time yeah um words of affirmation of course i mean i love hearing that you love me mm-hmm. you know that you miss me that mm-hmm. you can't wait to see me mm-hmm. you know like even when we express that through a text message yeah. like there's times where like i mean we work in the same building but like there's times when you like leave work i know you're leaving early and you just text me and you know i miss you or you know i can't wait to see you when you get home and it's like we literally just saw each other and i you know you're telling me that you miss me it's just like affirming me that like you love me you can't wait to see me and stuff so yeah those are the the five love languages um and then physical touch yep which is me yeah how how do you feel loved uh definitely um i know i knew you feel like you're just physical touch though yes <laughs> well yes yes no that's doubt. me nothing no else doubt. don't give me anything nope. don't tell me you let me just <laughs> yep <laughs> just I, let me i do not need anything else besides that <laughs> <laughs> no but uh you know it's just i always knew that you know physical touch like intimacy not just you know sex but you know, like rubbing my hair, scratching my back, which you don't really like doing, but I enjoy it a lot. Hmm. You know, um, like little gestures. What do you like, mean I don't really like doing it? You complain about it. Like, hey, scratch my back. Because you always ask me to scratch your back when I'm laying in bed comfortable and I'm about to go to sleep. It's That's, like you take off your shirt and you're like, scratch my back. It's like I'm comfortable right now yeah you yeah. scratch my back <laughs> and i do but then I'm like, okay now you scratch my back and like you're sleeping you know like <laughs> i uh, pretend to be sleeping yeah most of the time yeah. but uh you know even things like little things like that i i, I really enjoy you know it makes me feel warm inside you know mm-hmm. <laughs> it makes me feel you know it, it, i like it i really do enjoy that um so i mean i always knew that sex played a lot in me you know in in my persona and the way I felt, you know, so, I just, okay, so for you, yeah. Um, I don't know. I'm just you, you talk about how how sex played a, a big part in you. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know if you want to share this, but you were a virgin. Oh yeah, <laughs> uh, I when I first, uh, you know experience that it was with you yeah yeah so yeah it took your virginity yeah you you got this kid and you made him into a man <laughs> <laughs> but yeah um uh, yeah i was you know yeah um so yeah you know <laughs> <laughs> i left you speechless you left me speechless <laughs> yeah so i think i think with that um there was a um there was a point where um 
I, I know that that your love language is physical touch. Mm-hmm. I I know that you have a very high sex drive. Yeah. Um, and there was a point in time where I felt like we weren't being compatible when it came to that. Yeah. I felt like I couldn't meet you there. And I think that there was a lot of things that played a factor into why we weren't um, connecting, like, sexually. Mm -hmm. We weren't connecting. Um, You know, after becoming a mother, I just, I guess I felt I didn't feel as attractive anymore. Like, I just, I love my children, but there was a part of me that I kind of lost. Yeah. You know? Mm -hmm. Damn, that's hard to say. Yeah. I mean, there was a lot of factors, like you said, you know, uh, but with that specific situation, um, there was a lot of things that happened that led you to feel that way. You know? I mean, yeah. I mean, there was, there was that, there was, um, the fact that, you know, I didn't feel as attractive, you know, after having the kids. I mean, there was times where like, I had, I don't know, milk stains all over me. Mm-hmm. Like, um, my um, my breast milk would leak, and like I would just mm-hmm. be covered in breast milk. I just, I felt nasty. Like, mm-hmm. you know, it's just changing diapers all day. Just, it it was a part of me that like, it was consumed by motherhood yeah and it's just like i couldn't see myself as a as a sexual being i guess yeah and i just um yeah i just i i wasn't meeting you there and then you know just before that or even after that there was just some i guess psychological things or you know child stuff that happened to me in my childhood that like I had to process and I had to learn how to process and um um just like I, I, this is just me assuming that this is stuff that played a part in all of this um you know I was I was molested before um three different times uh, not three different times but by three different men um and I just feel like there was times where I just, I just felt like an object. Yeah. Yeah. And, um, I don't know. I just, I had a hard time. Coping with that? Yeah. And I had a hard time, you know, just with like being sexual. Yeah. And, um, I think that, like, required a lot of patience on your part. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, like, you know, I I wasn't always, you know, very knowledgeable or a know-it-all, like, now. Like, (laughs) like, I know everything now. But before, you know, um, I I didn't, you know. I I wasn't, I couldn't comprehend and I couldn't put things into perspective. Like, oh, well, she's feeling like this because, you know, she's going through this or she's going through that. Like, no, sometimes I was like, you know, what are you talking about? You look good. You know, like you look yeah. hot, you know, I don't, I don't see what you're seeing, you know? And I would always kind of like try to figure why. And I couldn't, you know, uh, but it obviously had a toll on you, like, you know, your past and currently what you were going through, you know, and in, in your eyes, you weren't able to see what I was seeing. And mm-hmm. it would frustrate me that I you couldn't see what I would see, you know. So it's mm-hmm. like it was kind of back and forth type thing. Um, but yeah, in, in, in that perspective, I patience did play a lot a big role in it because me as a man, of course, I want to physically touch you because I am very attracted to you. Mm-hmm. You know, you have, you know, a very how can I say this to be PG thirteen, <laughs> you know. I was very turned on by you. Like, mm-hmm. you know. You were. No, I mean, yeah, I am still am. <laughs> but, like, during those times where, like, I, I was, you know, during those times, I've always been, like, very attracted to you and turned on. You know, you always had that sex appeal to me. Mm-hmm. You know, you were always very hot, cute. And, uh, obviously, you know, 
I wanted to, you know, yeah, yeah I want to get my hands on you, you know. Uh, but um, there would be just times where, you know, it just couldn't happen. You know, Aiden would wake up. Um, you were busy. I was busy. There was a lot of times where we weren't able to do it. And there was a time where we didn't do it for a while, you know, and mm-hmm. that's where patience um, has to be key factor in that part of our loyalty. relationship. Loyalty. Specifically loyalty is like, you know, part of the patient comes with loyalty. It's part of the loyalty comes with patience, you know. It it's it's known both men and women. You no, know, not sexism or nothing, but men cheat, women cheat, right? Mm-hmm. Um I think a part of that has to do with a very little patience. You know, either the man or the woman has no patience. They don't want to wait around. Like, if you're not giving me what I want, then I'm going to go somewhere else and find it, right? Mm-hmm. That's a lot of, that's a mentality that that leads to that specific scenario, cheating, you know? and uh, Just historically what you kind of see or whatever, hear about. Yeah, you know, I mean, yeah, you have those people that just want to sleep with everybody and, you know, I mean, but those, you know, honestly, I mean, we're not in that scenario. Mm-hmm. But... Yeah, I mean, I could have, you know, not that I would ever, you know, um, but if I was somebody else that wasn't patient, you know, and I wasn't getting what I wanted, you know, it's easy for somebody else to go do and just, you know, find it, right? You know, but... Ouch, I don't want to hear this. I know, I know, sorry. <laughs> you know, but no, but this is, you know, in in my perspective, like, that was never an option. You know, mm-hmm. That was really never an option because... Like I like I like I'm reiterating. Like I was, I, I I loved you. I love you. I gotta say loved or past tense. But I, I you know I love you. Uh, I was always very like attracted to you. You know you had everything I wanted. So why would I want to go somewhere else? You know. Mm-hmm. Uh, but patience is definitely one of those things that that that's key. You know, and uh, kind of like you know we've talked before in the past, but you know there was there's scenarios where you have to that you may encounter and it's kind of like a like you know kind of like a an obstacle you can say but uh for example like you know i don't want to talk about coworkers, but there's been coworkers, you know men and women uh that you know they're in people a that you've come across that yeah. you've that you met they're yeah, perfect yeah people that i've met that have a certain mentality you know, um, coworkers are like, hey, there's a new coworker. Let me try to hit on them. Let, let me try to talk to them, knowing that they have a girlfriend or a wife, you know, stuff like that. You mean a specific situation where you used to work at? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, but not even getting into details on where or how. Or no, but yeah, like, but yeah. Yeah. So there was, you know, a, spe- a specific situation where, you know, there's this coworker, like, you know, always trying to get at the new girl or always trying to get into a new coworker, you know, knowing that he had a, you know, relationship relationship um you know and, and that was pretty obvious like oh shit you know i didn't know he was he had a girlfriend or he was married like you know stuff like that would come out i'm like well you know that's who they are but uh with me in particular like i was always very you know in invested in you i was always very like loyal to you and mm-hmm. that was something that apparently was pretty transparent to a lot of people like it was pretty obvious that I had that you know type of love for you because, you know, there was a coworker that worked with me. Um, I'm not hot, you no, know, I'm not like oh, he's hella hot, right? But uh, she she had a crush on me, you know. She she told me this years like later, not not during the time, but one of the things that she expressed to me was like in particular with with the scenario was wait, like, how know, did she tell you that she had a crush on you? Because uh, you recently just shared that with me, yeah. and I'm like. I didn't know this. Like I trusted her. <laughs> <laughs> well, but you know, um, it, the, I am trying to figure out how she said, it. she said it, you know, but she, 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 sp- we spoke a lot of Spanish, you know? Mm-hmm. So I'm trying to figure out like exactly how she said it and turn it into translate it into English. But it was more like, like, it was more about, she was showing, she was telling me how much respect she had for me. You know, oh, actually, as a matter of fact, now I remember how I started, we were just talking about, um, how we started. You know, we were working at a different store with a different owner. We were different, not even the same store. Yeah, yeah. When we brought that up, like, oh, you know, how did I start? You know, oh, I started a gilman. Like, yeah, I remember when you started, you know. Uh-huh. Yeah, like, you know, when you started, um, 
I, I had just started like maybe a couple of days uh, before, like within that week, I it was my first day too, you know, and, uh, and she, she, she was just telling me like, you know, I, I had a high respect for you because you weren't those type of, you know, guys that was trying to get at the new girl or get at the new coworker. You know, you were always in your own world and you were always there like, you know, just to work. And uh, she told me that she would, she respected the fact that when I would talk about my relationship, you know, they would ask me, Hey, you know, um, you know, you have a girlfriend? I'm like, yeah, I got a girlfriend, you know? And then they got to a point where like, yeah, I got, I got a kid too. You know, um, she earned a high level of respect because I never once tried to like, you know, get at somebody else. I was always very loyal, but not just that. Um, whenever I would speak about you that she can, she noticed that, that I, I was proud to say it. Like I was happy to say it. like, yeah, I, I got a girlfriend. Right. So, you know, she told me like, you know, like when I started, like, you know, there was something, you know, I, the way she said it in Spanish is, is a little different, but like, you know, like, you know, there was something that I liked about you, you know, and I was, you know, attracted to you. Yeah. I was attracted to you. And uh, I'm like, you know, Oh, okay. You know, like, yeah. But the fact that, that you're always very respectful to your partner, even though she wasn't there, like showed me a lot about who you are because like she, she said, you know, it's like, no, she didn't say it, but it, it kind of goes with anybody. If somebody's like not, not, not trying to be mischievous or anything. And they just think, like, Oh, he's just a regular person, like a regular guy. Maybe he doesn't have a girlfriend. Let me try to talk to him. And uh, I go along with it knowing that I have a girlfriend. Then that's where, you know, certain people kind of fall into that, you know, into that category. Like, Oh shit. I was just messing with him. I didn't even know he had a girl stuff like that mm -hmm. you know so like you know i never put that scenario out there for for her or anybody else you never kind of like let that i don't know how to say it like you never left those doors open like yes. oh yes it, perfect i'm yeah. available yeah. you know you never made it seem like that yeah yeah, yeah. so get it. so yeah and, you know and that's always how i i was as you know that's how i'm still am you know up to this point but you know it, it kind of it brought me back to think about about that because, you know, up until now, 13 years later, you know, I'm still the same person, you know, and it goes back to like the sex appeal. You know, I'm very attracted to you. You know, I'm, you know, I'm, you know, turned on by you a lot. And <laughs> okay, you <laughs> yeah, said that. <laughs> I know. Sorry, guys. Sorry. But, you know, that makes, you know, that makes it, you know, easy for me to, you know, you know, not think about anything else. You know, I, I'm just, I told you once before, you know, I, if things didn't work out with us, I would tell you straightforward, like, you know what, this ain't working out. Like, you know, I don't think we're going anywhere, you know, and I would just move on, break things off, go and start my new life. You know, this was when we were just dating. Damn. No, this is when we were just, that's why I made it clear. When we were just dating, like, you know, uh, I would never cheat on you. You know, I prefer me and you just break yeah, things off and... Before me go on my own life and mm -hmm. you know date other people you know i would never want to go that route you know i would rather be like hey this is my word and i don't think these things are going to out. if we do stay with this you know it's not going to work out but i i never had that that feeling with you you know from day one to now i never had that like oh I got, you know, no it was just never an option for me mm -hmm. and uh it, it, that's where i would get frustrated a lot with you i'm like like god damn it you're hot like, don't worry about it. Like, you know, because we, we all had insecurities. I've had my insecurities, you know, mm -hmm. but I also think that you're very, very honest with me. And we talk. We always talk. And anything that happens, you, you're always telling me. I'm always telling you. And I know you have your encounters with, you know, certain things like this. But I've always what had mean? with, you know, it's almost same scenario, you know, with other people. What do you mean? Like, like you've had... um well, not not same scenario, but you know, if you had your encounters with with people like you know, because you're attracted, like you're a very attractive person, so uh, I'm sure I'm not the only one that sees it, right? Oh, yeah. So, you know, I don't know. I don't care. Yeah, I know. I know, but that's that's what I like about you, that things like that. Is like, well, I mean, I have I have had situations like I had, um. I had a few situations at work, I guess. Um, so there was this. God, I, I mean, they don't work there. They they're long gone, but whatever. There was the this one guy, for example, right? Um, 
I remember after he stopped working there, he was actually um, in a relationship with another girl that worked there. Um, And, you know, whatever, whatever, like I didn't care. Um, And I remember him after leaving, he I had him as a friend on Facebook and he sent me a message one night or something like that. I forgot. He sent me a message one day saying that he really liked me. Mm-hmm. And then he said it again. Like, I really, I really like you. And I'm just sitting there like, you, you know, you can see my profile, right? You know, you can see that I'm in a relationship. You know, you can see that I have a child. Cause I think at that point, oh no, I had children. I had yeah. both of the kids, mm-hmm. you know, I, you know, you can see that I'm in a relationship. Like, I don't know what you expect me to say back. I'm not going to say, I'm not going to reciprocate like those feelings. Like I didn't even know you. Yeah. Um, and then he tells me, he takes it back. He sends me another message and he takes it back. This, this all just happened through messages on, on Facebook. Mm -hmm. He sends me another message on Facebook and he takes it back. Like, Oh, it was my cousin who got on my, Mm -hmm. (laughs) on my account. And he sent you that message. I was like, Oh yeah, sure. Cousins can be annoying. I understand. You know, Mm -hmm. I I wasn't going to entertain it. And then he, but I told you the whole time. Yeah. I told yeah. you when it happened. I told you that he messaged me. Like, you knew about it. Mm-hmm. Um, and then he, he was just asking me about, um, about the girl, I guess. She was still there. He was just asking me about her. And I was like, oh, I, I, I don't know anything about her. Like, I didn't talk to her. I don't, I don't know anything about her. I don't know. I don't know what you want me to tell you. Mm-hmm. I don't know anything. And then he kept messaging me um kind of like i felt like he wanted to say something yeah and then he finally said i don't mean to make this awkward but i had a thing for you and my response to him was look it seems like you need a friend based on you know conversations that we kind of had in between and he was like you know just saying how he messed it up with the girl and stuff like that like i was kind of there mm-hmm. you know to to you know hear him out whatever he needed to say and you know i told him yeah when he told me what happened i was like yeah you did mess up mm-hmm. you know i was uh, i was i guess he needed a friend and i was being a friend yeah, you yeah. know even though i didn't really talk to him before that yeah um and then my response to him like i said was if you're seeking a friend in me you can't talk to me. I mean, keep that to yourself. Yeah. I'm not I'm not interested in knowing th- that. Um, and what else did I tell him? I said, um, I'm married and I have children. Mm-hmm. And it's not really appropriate for me to be talking to you if you're going to take it there. Yeah. If there's nothing, there, there's just going to be nothing. Mm-hmm. And then his response to me was, I really like that answer. He said, not to make it any more awkward, but your man is lucky and I wish more people were like you. And yeah, he's like, you're right. Um, I, I, I do just want your friendship. Yeah. But then after that, I told you about it again. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, I told you about him, you know, confessing something to me and you were like, nope. Yep. I don't care. I don't want you talking to him. Yeah. And I was like, you know what? You're right. Yeah. I shouldn't be talking to him. It's yeah. like, it, it's not appropriate. Yeah. So I blocked him and I never talked to him again. <laughs> yeah. And I think that's literally the only time I've ever told you, like, you know, I don't want you talking to this person. I don't yeah. Want you well, that. I mean, it's because he was yeah. not, I mean, what's the point? Yeah. <laughs> what, what was the point of him telling I, me that? Yeah. And I just felt like during the time it was like, he he wasn't respecting the fact that you know it was pretty obvious you you had a husband you had kids yeah and uh even like the first inter- situation like oh okay you know like what do you yeah what and i you- mean and i don't blame you for telling me like don't talk don't no delete him don't yeah. talk to him it's just it makes the most sense it's yeah. like why it's like if a girl came to you i mean 
now that I know that, you know, your coworker, so I don't even want you talking to her again. <laughs> <laughs> no, she's cool. Yeah. Like, you know, we after after some time, like we um we built a friendship. Yeah. And I'm really cool with her. Like yeah. if I see her, like, you know, we're cool. Yeah. So I don't I think that, you know, it, it just she never took it to another level. Yeah, exactly. And in a sense, I also got a lot of respect for her, you know, for, mm-hmm. her, you know, even just, ex, you know, ex, how do you say, expressing the that way to that me. she said it. Yeah. To you. you know, yeah. And like, you know, I like, you know what, like that makes me feel good. The fact that people can see that when I talk about you, it shows, you know, and just her actually like, you know, not keeping it to herself. But sorry, I almost burped. Um, that was me. Um, you know, she kind of said it like, you know, it made me feel good that I was expressing myself about about you like that you know? yeah but uh you know and, and one of the things with with that scenario is like like from day one we've always communicated everything we talk to each other you know and uh our lives are pretty much an open book because we have phones you know my password i know i know your password you know? i don't feel the need to go through your phone though yeah, like exactly I don't yeah exactly but we were also um we're also very open with everything, you know, like yeah, that we I have nothing to hide. Exactly. That's the point. Yeah. It's just that we have nothing to hide. Yeah. So that's a result of us, you know, having a lot of communication, you know, mm. we communicate a lot. We talk about a lot of things and, you know, it, it, it's just like, it's that those scenarios with us having each other password for everything. It, it just comes naturally because, you know, I mean, there's nothing, there's no reason for me to lock I mean, it. you have to have my password because I'm so forgetful. <laughs> like, yeah. if I change my password, I, I you have to have my password for everything because I, I don't be remembering my password. <laughs> I remember in one day you had to change your Apple password three times uh-huh, because forgot you forgot it. it. You forgot it the first time you changed it. The second and the third time, I'm like, God damn, you know what? Just write it. Just write <laughs> Just it down. Just give me your password. Yeah. And uh, after that, you forgot it again. You changed it without my permission. Yeah, yeah, I did. <laughs> but yeah, I so think I know it now. I think I don't I, know. Yeah, I might have to reset it again. Though. Probably it doesn't matter. Yeah, but you know, like I said, it, it just it's there's no reason for us to have a lock on anything, no. you know, or not know each other's powers. But we have to because you, you don't want to just you know have open anything, you know, for public, right? Or mm-hmm. even our kids. Like if they have our phones, then they're gonna they're never giving the them hell. back. Yeah, <laughs> so we need to have a password, right? But you know, that's how. That's how we are. You know, we, mm-hmm. we don't have nothing to hide. So everything's an open book. You yeah. know, like, hey, you want to check my phone? Cool. Go go for it, you know? I mean, not that you do, but, like, hey, you know, kind of like you see a lot of things, like, where it's like, oh, let, let me borrow your phone. Let me take a picture, you know? And then you see people, like, oh, looking at the pictures or the text, stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Like, no, you can check all my stuff. I can check all your stuff. I mean, I just it. want you to know on my end, like, cheating has never been an option. Yeah. You know, I just... I, I've never thought about it. I never acted on it. I've never been close to acting on it. It's just, I don't, it's just not an option. It's just, like you said, it's like, if I'm going to be with you, I'm going to be with you. If if I feel like it's not working out, or, I mean, in the past, like if I felt like it wasn't working out, it's just, I was going to let you know. Mm-hmm. It's just, like to me, the act of like even the thought of like me going there is like if I disrespect you, I'm just disres- disrespecting my family. Yeah, it's like if I were to ever go there, it's like I'm I'm disrespecting our children. I'm disrespecting just everything we've built. Like we've worked so hard for what you know the things that you know we've built together. It's just it's it's like a, a it's. it's disrespect <laughs> yeah and uh you know i want to say a couple of things but you know we we talked in the previous podcast that about grudges mm-hmm. right mm-hmm. um i'm a very i'm a person that takes respect very you know high to the heart yeah i i really take it to the heart mm-hmm. and i feel when someone disrespects me just how how easy it is for me to you know have your trust it's very easy to to break that Mm -hmm. and when you break that trust like i i literally do not give a shit and i lose my character you know not i mean i don't lose my character but 
I, I am very strict with that. I am very like strong with that feeling. Like you know what, you lost it, you ain't gonna get, you ain't gonna get back. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm just like that. And I told you before in the past, like you can do anything to me. You can do whatever the fuck. You can insult me. You can slap the shit at me. You can do whatever the hell really? you want. Yeah, you can. Oh, yeah, but I'm not gonna let you. <laughs> and and I always forgive you. And mm-hmm. I told you, oh, I've always told you this, and I've told you this many times. Even my mom knows, you know, um, if you were to ever cheat on me, like, I would never forgive you. I know. And uh, and it's hard for me to to say this because it, it brings me pain to say, to even think about a scenario. But if you were to ever cheat on me, I'm not going to, I'm not going to just quit. Like, I'm not, we're in a good, we're in a point where we're in such a good, you know, moment. We built so much and I wouldn't want to just give up on it. As much as it hurts me just talking about it, um, I won't ever give up on us. Even I have to swallow a tough pill and, and work it out, you know? Um, yeah, I, I, I would never give up on us. You know, and uh, that's something that I told you once, like, I, I will never forgive you. But I'm standing here now and I'm saying, you know, we got this. You know, I know it's not an option. That's for sure. It, it, it's not an option uh, for either one of us. You just made me cry. I know. I made myself <laughs> no, cry but a little bit. The reason why it's like making me feel a little <laughs> <laughs> emotional. Yeah. It's not because, like, it's kind of like a, it's like a, a sense of relief, not because that, that will ever be an option. Yeah, it's not like I got a free slate, you know? No, yeah, it's yeah. not because of that. It's just because I know that. I guess I just need the reassurance that there's nothing on this earth that could ever break us apart. Yeah, I know. And it's just. And I feel the same way. So I understand exactly what you're saying. But I would never cheat on you. I know. I know you wouldn't. And I wouldn't either. I wouldn't yeah. either. I know. You'd be stupid. Ah, <laughs> definitely. <laughs> You'd be stupid if you ever cheat on me. Yeah, I know. But yeah, so, you know, that was, uh, you know, that was something that I've never, I hadn't thought about in a long time. You know, like the whole, like, if you would ever cheat on me, that's something, but... You know, after our, our conversation, and it, I started just I started thinking about it. You know, and uh, I said to myself, like, I'm not fucking stupid. You know, uh, I know that's not gonna happen, but I'm not stupid enough to just give up on us. You know, I, I'm not. You know, me and you are are, are friends. You know, you're my best friend, and uh, you're, you're my, my wife. best friend. Yeah, I know, I know. and uh, and you're the mother of my kids. You know, I love you to death, and you know it would be stupid to me. It would be stupid of me not to like fight, you know. Um, I mean, I've said I said this before too, like, and I mean this, um, and I, I've shared it with some friends that <laughs> they didn't really believe me, yeah. but I said, um, if there was a time where it came to a point where me and you decided to like split up, mm-hmm. um, and you know not continue our lives together, um. I I wouldn't I wouldn't I wouldn't remarry. Yeah. I I wouldn't um you know seek other relationships. I think I would just it would just be be, be about me and, and my kids. Yeah. Not that I I see that ever happening. <laughs> mm-hmm. I don't ever see that happening. Yeah. But um if it ever did like I I don't even like like to think about if if the what if like because I don't ever want it to happen but I would never I would never remarry I would never get with anybody else and it's just I went through a lot you know my mother was was a single mom and um you know when she met my sister's dad it's just like that situation like it, it tore us apart yeah yeah. And um, I would never want to put my kids through what I went through. Yeah. I would never allow anything 
like what I went through happened to that. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. We we talked about that, and I I completely understand. You know, with with me and my backstory, it's a little it's different than yours. You know, mm-hmm. um, growing up, you know, luckily I've always had both my parents. You know, um, through the rough patches here and there, of course. You know, I mean now they're they're no longer together, but through through the years I've learned lessons and you know one of the things that my mom always told me you know is uh, respect women you know and she didn't just mean like don't ever hit them you know or don't ever like talk back to them like it was always like you know she would always push that upon me like you know if you ever have a girlfriend you better not cheat on her you know yeah you better not um make hurt them intentionally you should never put a lay hand on them like you know physically she always pushed that like you know cheating was not an option an option yeah my dad is probably why you feel like you know if it you know if it weren't to work out it's more it's better to just you know cut it off than to continue than to go behind somebody's back and do something yeah and and the thing with my mom is you know i don't know if it was her experience or you know i mean i know there's things that happen with her relationship but you know one of the things that i I I think my mom was like it wasn't just like you know like oh you know you have a girlfriend oh don't ever cheat on him no it was like it was random she would just bring it up randomly you know we would be um, I was coming back from soccer and she would just tell me you know it was just always random things and I think that always like it, it helped me capture it you know so it it was more like it was a concern of her you know that that I wouldn't be she wanted you to be a good man yeah yeah and uh, that always stuck to me you know that I think I thank her a lot for that for that because you know um you know it's just that's the way i am that's the person i am you know i have them tell you like you know if you don't like something just leave it you know and uh, i am the way i am because of her you know Uh, partly because i'm also my own person you know and i have my own mentality yeah but she she i think she let me shape you yeah 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 so yeah i mean i understand where you're coming from and you know with me as well so, so yeah, that was a, it was pretty emotional, honestly. Um, but yeah, I mean, I, I that think. That was a good conversation. Yeah, it was, you know, and, you know, with, with kind of going back with, the, with this book, like it helped me a lot. Like it, it really, really helped me a lot. I'm glad it things. did. It just, I stumbled upon it, upon it and, you know, I got us each a copy and yeah. I'm glad that you took away something valuable out of it, like something that helped you and you know, ultimately helped our relationship and, you know, helped us understand each other. Yeah. And one of the main things, I, I, I never really found your love language because you have multiple. There's a lot mm-hmm. of things. But what it did show me was that I can try always to hit it, you know, hit that love language. Even if it's not yours, I'll try to hit it. I see how I can make her feel good with that love language, you know, and it challenges me to keep on doing what I am doing now currently, right? Either it's doing the bed or even, you know, hooking back the the water spout that, you know, kind of fell off, you know, with the wind two days ago. You know, oh, you did it Yeah, already? I put oh, it back on. Okay. And, you know, installing back lights, you know, like porch lights in the back or, you know, Christmas, little things like that. I'll, yeah, I'm just always the trying. little things that you do for me. Yeah, but... You know, just it helped me with that. That reminds me, like when you put the lights in the in the yard. Yeah, the oh. kids were so excited to show you to they surprise were like, you. It's funny because I seen them through the kitchen window. Yeah, but I I kept my mouth shut because I knew they were so excited to see me because yeah. Daddy has a surprise, but we can't tell you what it is. Mm. And it was it was when they took me outside. Surprise! Yeah, yeah. I, was, I acted surprised. I was like, oh my God, my lights are up. And they were just really excited to show me. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. And I remember with that scenario, it mm-hmm. was funny because Aiden came out. I had Aiden help me out, right? And then he went inside and then Adi came out. He's like, oh my God, they're so pretty, so beautiful. I'm like, okay, don't tell Mama anything because it's a surprise. So what is the first thing she does? Mama, mama, daddy has a surprise, surprise. outside for you. <laughs> I'm like, wait, I, I, I didn't But you need. can't see. You can't yeah, see I'm like, it's wow. a surprise. Yeah, it's just, it's cute. But she almost, well, I mean. She almost killed it. Yeah, she almost but killed it. But I had it, seen it. Yeah, yeah I mean. it wasn't her. I seen it. Yeah. I seen the light. But yeah, I thought it was funny. You know? But yeah, like, it It just, uh, it motivates me each and every day to, like, do something to make you feel good. 
because number one priority for me is always going to be making you happy. And uh, when I know that I'm making you happy, it makes me feel happy. You know, um, self-care, uh, when you take care of yourself and I see how happy you are, it makes me happy. I'm not doing anything. Honestly, I'm not. But knowing that you're happy during the moment, it makes me feel happy. When you tell me, yeah. oh, I just put like 12 items in my cart. Should I buy it? Like, yeah, buy it. You mm-hmm. know, and then like, you buy it and then I see in your face like, okay, I just bought it. It should be here, blah, blah, blah. You're happy and it makes me happy. You know, the way you want to decorate the room, I did it because I wanted to see you happy. And uh, that that was. I remember when my cousin came over mm-hmm. and he was like. He walked into the room after we had put everything together. He was like, so where's Mario space? Like, it looks so girly in here. Yeah. I was like, well, he doesn't mind. Yeah. Where's <laughs> it's my like, sp- I've sp- asked him. Yeah. I've asked him, like, so much. It's like, so how would you like to, like, what do you want to do? Like, anything you want to add? Like, no, just do whatever you want. It's like, it's, and I, it's just literally, it's, I have my vanity and just, it looks, it looks. I feel like it's kind of girly, kind of. Yeah. And I remember you when mind. when you got your um your flower frame, yeah, you were like pushing me. Oh, get something, get something. You started showing me pictures, and I'm like, okay, fuck it, I'll, I'll start looking around. You know, I remember when I was looking through Amazon or eBay or whatever I was looking at. Like I was looking like, okay, this is nice, but how will it look with the Selena? Like, is it gonna mismatch? Is it gonna look bad? Is it gonna look off? I'm like, no. If I do this, this is not gonna look you know stand out yeah it was not gonna stand out and you know what never mind you know it's just it came naturally to me i mean like to just let me do whatever yeah you know and and i don't mind you know i have my space and i know where it's at you know and uh, i'm happy with that it's the fish tanks yeah so yeah just in case yeah, you don't yeah, know. yeah. oh yeah. that okay yeah. so you know yeah. you have your little place and i have my place where you know we enjoy so yeah i don't mind Okay, well, I think that's a that's a good ending point. Yeah, but yeah. So uh, anybody that's interested in the book, it's uh, by Gary Chapman. Mm-hmm. I do highly recommend it because if it helped me, I hope that it can help somebody else out there. You know, yeah. and it's a it's a good book to like really think about it and think in perspective. And I don't know. I just I'm really I'm blessed. I I don't use that word much, but I am blessed that you found that book. You know, um, and I was just there. I remember when I was just there, half price bookstore, just looking for for uh, action thriller type books, fictional books, Jack Reacher. Um, I forget the other ones, but it was like all like mysterious type books. And, uh, you know, you fell upon that one and it changed me. Yeah. Made me a better person. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. Um, yeah. I think this one was uh, emotional for me personally yeah you almost cried yeah i kind of almost did i felt it man i felt it (laughs) but yeah thank you uh for tuning in and uh we'll see you on the next one